The waiting room buzzed with the low murmur of anxious whispers. The air was thick with a mix of anticipation and unease, as patients shifted in their seats glancing occasionally at the clock on the wall. The room was a microcosm of human emotion, each person lost in their own thoughts, hoping for relief and answers. Among them sat Mr. Jones, nervously tapping his foot. His eyes darted around the room taking in the worried faces of others. He felt a kinship with them, united by the shared experience of waiting and the hope for a positive outcome. He clutched his stomach, a wave of nausea washing over him. The discomfort had been persistent, gnawing at him for weeks. He had tried to ignore it, hoping it would go away on its own, but it had only grown worse. Today he could no longer put it off. Today he was determined to get to the bottom of his discomfort. He had done his research, read countless articles online, and even tried a few home remedies, but nothing had worked. He needed professional help, and he was ready to face whatever it took to find relief. Finally, the door opened, and a friendly face greeted him. Dr. Smith, with her warm smile and reassuring presence, was a sight for sore eyes. She had a reputation for being thorough and compassionate, and Mr. Jones felt a glimmer of hope. Mr. Jones, Dr. Smith is ready to see you now. The nurse's voice was calm and professional, a stark contrast to the chaos of the waiting room. Mr. Jones took a deep breath and stood up, feeling a mix of anxiety and relief. Dr. Smith, a beacon of warmth and knowledge, motioned Mr. Jones to a seat. Her office was a sanctuary of calm, filled with soft lighting and soothing colors. It was a stark contrast to the sterile, impersonal waiting room. Tell me what brings you in today? Dr. Smith's voice was gentle, yet authoritative. She had a way of making patients feel heard and understood, a skill honed over years of practice. Her demeanor instantly put Mr. Jones at ease. He felt the tension in his shoulders begin to melt away, replaced by a cautious optimism. He was in good hands. Well, doctor, I haven't been feeling quite myself lately. Mr. Jones' voice wavered slightly, but he pressed on, determined to convey the full extent of his symptoms. I've been experiencing some digestive issues, and it's quite concerning. He went on to describe the pain, the nausea, and the impact it had on his daily life. Dr. Smith listened intently, nodding occasionally, her expression one of focused concern. Dr. Smith took notes, her mind already formulating a plan of action. She asked a few more questions, probing gently but thoroughly, ensuring she had all the information she needed. After a few moments, she looked up and met Mr. Jones's eyes. I think we have a good starting point, she said, her voice filled with confidence. Let's run some tests and see what we're dealing with. Mr. Jones felt a wave of relief. For the first time in weeks, he felt like he was on the path to finding answers. He smiled at Dr. Smith, grateful for her expertise and compassion. As he left the office, he felt a renewed sense of hope. The journey to recovery had begun, and he was not alone. With Dr. Smith by his side, he knew he could face whatever challenges lay ahead. Digestive issues, you say. Can you tell me a bit more about what you've been experiencing? Mr. Jones hesitated for a moment, gathering his thoughts. Well, for starters, I've been having these awful stomach cramps. It's like a constant knot in my gut. And then there's the, you know, the diarrhea. I can't seem to stay out of the bathroom. I see. And how long have these symptoms been going on? About two days now. Mr. Jones, it sounds like you might have gastroenteritis. Mr. Jones's eyebrows shot up in alarm. Gastroenteritis? That sounds serious. How did I get that? Don't worry, Mr. Jones. It's actually quite common, especially this time of year. It's often caused by viruses or bacteria that inflame the stomach and intestines. But how did I catch it? Gastroenteritis is highly contagious. You can get it through direct contact with an infected person, or by touching contaminated surfaces and then touching your mouth. Even food can be a culprit, especially if it's been improperly handled or undercooked. So it's like a stomach flu? In a way, yes. Although it's not actually related to the influenza virus. As I mentioned before, gastroenteritis is primarily caused by viruses like norovirus and rotavirus. Bacteria such as E. coli and salmonella are also common offenders, often found in contaminated food or water. It's fascinating, really, how these tiny organisms can wreak such havoc on our digestive system. Mr. Jones, however, was less than enthralled by the thought of microscopic invaders setting up camp in his gut. So, apart from the cramps and, well, the bathroom trips, what other symptoms should I be looking out for? Those are definitely the most common symptoms, but you might also experience nausea, vomiting, fever chills, and even muscle aches. In some cases, 
Gastroenteritis can lead to dehydration, which is why it's crucial to stay hydrated by drinking plenty of fluids. Dehydration? How would I know if I'm dehydrated? Well, look out for signs like decreased urination, dry mouth fatigue and dizziness. If you experience any of these, it's important to seek medical attention immediately. While most cases of gastroenteritis clear up within a few days, there's a slight chance of complications, especially in young children, the elderly, and those with weakened immune systems. Complications like what? In rare cases, gastroenteritis can lead to severe dehydration, kidney problems, or even seizures. So, what can we do about it? And if the diarrhea is particularly bothersome, we can discuss anti-diarrheal medications. As for the cramps, Dr. Smith continued, over-the-counter pain relievers like acetaminophen can help. Avoid sugary drinks as they can worsen diarrhea. I recommend drinking plenty of clear fluids like water, broth, or sports drinks to replace lost electrolytes, she advised. The key is to manage the symptoms and prevent dehydration. The good news is that gastroenteritis usually resolves on its own within a few days, Dr. Smith said, her tone calming. Mr. Jones, feeling a wave of relief wash over him, nodded along, taking mental notes. To be absolutely sure it's gastroenteritis and rule out any other possibilities, I'd like to run a few tests, Dr. Smith suggested. These tests are crucial because gastroenteritis can often mimic other conditions, and we want to ensure we're treating the right ailment. By conducting these tests, we can pinpoint the exact cause of your symptoms and tailor the treatment accordingly. Tests? Mr. Jones's apprehension returned. He had hoped for a quick diagnosis and was now feeling a bit overwhelmed by the prospect of undergoing multiple tests. What kind of tests are we talking about? He asked, trying to mask his anxiety. The results of these tests will give us a clearer picture and guide our treatment plan, she explained. We'll start with a blood test to check for signs of dehydration, which is common with gastroenteritis. Dehydration can be serious, so it's important to catch it early. Additionally, the blood test can reveal any other underlying conditions that might be contributing to your symptoms. And a blood test can check for signs of dehydration or any other underlying conditions. This is a simple procedure where a small sample of your blood is taken and analyzed. It can provide a wealth of information about your overall health and help us rule out other potential issues. Don't worry, they're quite simple, Dr. Smith assured him. A stool sample will help us identify the culprit whether it's a virus or bacteria. This is important because the treatment for viral gastroenteritis is different from bacterial gastroenteritis. By knowing exactly what we're dealing with, we can prescribe the most effective treatment and get you on the road to recovery faster. Mr. Jones, although not thrilled about the prospect of providing samples, understood the importance of a proper diagnosis. He realized that these tests were a necessary step in ensuring he received the best possible care. With a clearer understanding of the process, he felt a bit more at ease. He nodded, ready to proceed with the test, hoping for a swift and accurate diagnosis. Prevention is always better than cure, Mr. Jones, Dr. Smith emphasized, her tone shifting from treatment to proactive measures. Washing your hands thoroughly with soap and water, especially after using the bathroom, changing diapers, and before preparing food, is crucial in preventing the spread of these pesky bugs, she advised. And remember, she continued, always wash fruits and vegetables thoroughly before eating, cook meat and eggs thoroughly, and avoid drinking water from potentially contaminated sources. These simple steps can significantly reduce your risk of contracting gastroenteritis, Dr. Smith concluded. As Mr. Jones rose to leave, he felt a surge of gratitude for Dr. Smith's thoroughness and empathy. The visit had been more than just a routine checkup. It had been a transformative experience. Dr. Smith had taken the time to explain everything in detail, ensuring that Mr. Jones fully understood his condition and the steps he needed to take to manage it effectively. He finally understood the nature of his ailment and felt empowered with the knowledge to manage his symptoms and prevent future infections. The information Dr. Smith provided was not just medical jargon, it was practical advice that Mr. Jones could easily incorporate into his daily life. He now knew the importance of maintaining good hygiene, especially hand washing, and how crucial it was to handle food safely to avoid any further complications. Thank you, Dr. Smith, Mr. Jones said, a genuine smile gracing his face. He felt a deep sense of relief and appreciation. The fear and uncertainty that had plagued him for weeks were now replaced with clarity and confidence. I feel much better now knowing what I'm dealing with.
the reassurance that came from understanding his condition was invaluable. He no longer felt like he was in the dark, guessing what might be wrong with him. Instead, he had a clear plan and the tools to take control of his health. I'll be sure to follow your advice diligently. Mr. Jones had even taken notes during the consultation, jotting down key points that Dr. Smith had emphasized. He was determined to make the necessary lifestyle changes and follow the treatment plan to the letter. You're most welcome, Mr. Jones, Dr. Smith replied warmly. The doctor's genuine concern and approachable demeanor had made a significant difference. It wasn't just about prescribing medication, it was about empowering the patient with knowledge and support. Remember, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or concerns. Dr. Smith's open door policy was reassuring. Knowing that he could contact the doctor anytime gave Mr. Jones an added layer of security, and most importantly, take care. Dr. Smith's parting words were more than just a casual farewell. They were a heartfelt wish for Mr. Jones's well-being. As Mr. Jones walked out of the doctor's office, the weight of worry lifted from his shoulders. He felt lighter, both physically and emotionally. The burden of uncertainty had been replaced with a sense of purpose and direction. He was ready to tackle his gastroenteritis head-on, armed with knowledge and a newfound respect for the importance of hand-washing and food safety. Mr. Jones was determined to implement the changes Dr. Smith had recommended. He knew that by doing so, he could not only manage his current condition but also prevent future health issues. The visit had been a turning point, marking the beginning of a healthier, more informed approach to his well-being.